But let's um, turn attention back here in Africa, where Gam Zambia is uh, holding elections in a tight race between uh, President Lungu and uh, Hakainde Hichilema. We're joined now by a guest. He is an African affairs analyst, Ibrahim Anoba. He joins us via Skype from Baltimore um, for more on these elections in Zambia. Good to have you join us. My pleasure. So um, this is uh, the most contested election in Zambia, Zambia's history, 16 candidates. But it is also very reminiscent of the 2016 election where you had uh, just two major candidates, which is President Edgar Lungu and Hakainde Hichilema. When you look at this election, what do you think that the deciding issues are? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I think a uh, majority of Zambians heading to the polls this morning have one germane question in their mind, and that involves the economy. Um, since Lungu assumed power in 2015 after the runoff election, which of course he narrowly edged uh, Ichilema, uh, things have gone for the worse in terms of the economy. Uh, the debt to GDP ratio in 2015 was about 35%, now it's about 117%. Half of the Zambian population are in poverty, 48% or 42% rather, are in extreme poverty. Uh, the average Zambian do not have the economic power that they used to have five years ago. So that's one economic problem will be in the minds of anyone heading to the polls this morning in Zambia. When you look at the fact that, um, like you rightly noted, the economic issues are a, a, a major issue in this election, and unemployment is also part of that economic issue. And young people from about 53% of the, or over 50% of the 83% registered voters. Um, how does that play, and in whose favor do you think that that would play? Uh, first, I think what we have to keep in mind is that uh, a significant portion, I think about 50% 50, 50 of the people heading to the polls today are below the age of 35. And majority of them are concerned about employment as much as they're concerned about the economy. Uh, but what we've seen is that uh, the unemployment rate in Zambia has reached about 20%, or uh, perhaps higher than that, which is kind of uh, interesting for an African country. So uh, if you have a majority of the electorate being youth, concerned about unemployment, uh, they want to see someone that can give them that job. And Lungu hasn't really done that. Majority of the money is taken from China and other uh, lenders have gone into ad infrastructure, and not necessarily in... Um, soft infrastructure or economic infrastructure that will translate into employment for the youth. So who will answer that call of the youth? And of course, who will guarantee peaceful Zambia for the next five years uh, will determine who we vote for? And right now, it seems to point in the direction of a dilemma. So a lot of people have said that this um, election will test Gambia's, uh, sorry, Zambia's uh, stable election. But when you look at the fact that even just before the election, they have been um, recording episodes of violence, people have died. Um, they have been, there was a, an introduction of a new biometric system of voting to identify um, voters at the polling units just days before this election. There was also in, an introduction of a new voting voter register. Many people did say that there were people who were not eligible to vote that were added, that were added to that register. Doesn't that already test the, the democracy in Zambia just before the election? I mean, certainly the, uh, the Zambian democracy is going through this test of its life. Uh, remember, when in, 20, uh, in 2015, after the unfortunate demise of uh, former President Michael Sata, uh, they had a quick run of a by-election that put uh, Lungu into power. And many people thought uh, he would just clinch onto power and not necessarily hold election the following year. Well, in 2016, he also held another election, which, of course, reinstated his five-year term in power. Uh, but the fact that Zambia is at this point, uh, at, uh, at a point where it's having periodic elections, points to uh, a sustenance of its democracy. Whereas this current election, uh, which has been marred by claims and counterclaims of fraud or allegations of rigging by both sides, uh, is going to put the Zambian democracy into great test. And uh, I guess one way the country can pull itself out of it is by ensuring that the episode we are seeing on the street of Lusaka this morning with people uh, pomelting cars, claiming those cars are carrying fake ballots or pre-filled ballots, or the long lines in streets of uh, Lusaka, uh, the, the one thing that the government can do is to ensure that all this drama this morning 
will only lead to one thing, and that's the announcement of the rightful uh, winner of the election. But one of the things we're also witnessing, in addition to all that you have said, is the fact that there are long queues. We've seen people carrying chairs from their homes just to sit by because of the long queues. People are eager to vote. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, you see, uh, a lot of uh, people in Zambia, besides being concerned about the economy, they are concerned about issues of human rights. And the Lungu administration has been very notorious for its crackdown on, on dissent or, or dissidents and private media outlets. Uh, and of course, you, you've seen the languages across governments, uh, across states in Southern Africa, recently with the uh, imprisonment of Jacob Zuma, the uh, outstar of Mugabe, and now Zambia. Southern Africans want one thing, aside economic prosperity, they want leaders that will be responsible to the constitution, leaders that will not uh, drag them out of their beds from their wives and children in the middle of the night and throw them into prisons because they do not agree uh, with the government status quo. And Lugo hasn't been really uh, in favor of that recently. He's been arresting dissidents, and uh, I think the event leading up to this election has it that he pretty much threw people, uh, opposition figures into prison. Remember, in 2017, even Ich uh, Ichelema, the opposition rival here, was uh, put on trial in Zambia. For allegedly uh, for alleged crimes of uh, treason, and the reason why he was arrested primarily was primarily because he refused to yield to the uh, president's convoy, and so you, you can see the absurdity in that. So people are much more concerned as as they are on economic uh, problems, as they are also concerned with um, issues burdening with uh, human rights. So let me ask you. Um, Irrespective of how this election goes, whether it goes to um, President Edgar Lungu or whether it goes to Hichilema Hakainde, how, how do you see things playing out irrespective of who wins this election? Uh, I think we have to be hopeful. We really have to hope that things do not slide into violence. Uh, politics in Zambia and in fact South Africa generally can be really, really volatile. Uh, consider the rhetorics coming from uh, Ichilema. In fact, Ichilema made a uh, statement an hour ago when he was ca casting his vote that uh, the long queues could be a problem. And the problem there could also be the fact that uh, the Lungu administration is preventing people from voting in opposition strongholds, as we've seen it uh, prevent uh, Ichilema from traveling to opposition strongholds to campaign. Uh, Islam couldn't travel, he couldn't fly by here to the remote places where Lungu had um, significant presence. And uh, Lungu said the, the reason for that, for that prevention, was because he was mitigating COVID uh, problem. Uh, so we, we really hope uh, after tonight, there will be announcement of results, worst case tomorrow, and whomever is announced as eventual winner will, uh, will of course, call, the, the, the defeated party will, of course, call the uh, the winning party to congratulate uh, the individual. We hope this will be the case so that uh, the democracy that Zambia fought to preserve in 64, 1964 will endure for as long as it can. Mm. I guess um, there is a test of democracy in, in Africa every other day and this election in Zambia is just one of those critical examples. Thank you so much for talking to us, African Affairs Analyst Ibrahim Anoba. Always my pleasure.